In this video, we'll be talking about how we can start to communicate with the algebra that we know, as well as expanding on some of the algebra that we've started learning previously. You can see in front of you on your screen uh, expression laid out in algebra tiles. What I'd like you to try and do is express what you see as an algebraic expression. So go from the tiles to an algebraic expression. Try it now. Did you get 4x squared? What we're looking at now, 4x squared, is called a term. Terms, algebraic terms, have two parts. So if I'm looking at the term 4x squared, we can break this up into the variable which is the letter x and the exponent 2. Terms also have a coefficient. or the number in front of the variable. So let's look at some more algebraic terms and see if we can identify the coefficient and the variable. So my first term is 7y to the exponent 3. That would mean that 7 is the coefficient and y to the exponent 3 is the variable. My second example, negative 4.9 a b squared c. Negative 4.9 would be the coefficient. And, tricky one, the variable is a, b squared, c. So when we're looking at algebraic terms, the variable piece can be made up of more than one letter. If I look at part c, I have the term one-half. Here, the number part of this, one-half, represents the coefficient. And in this particular case, there is no variable. So terms can have a coefficient, but they don't always have to have a variable. And the last part, z to the exponent 4, we'll do the variable first. z to the exponent 4 is the variable. And in this case, even though we can't see it, this term has a coefficient of 1. So when there is no coefficient in front of a variable, it's understood to be 1. The terms that we've been looking at can be defined based on their degree. The degree of a term is the sum of the exponents on the variable. Let's look at an example. If my term is 3x cubed y to the power of 10, and I want to find the degree of this term, I would look at the variables, x and y. I would look at the degrees on each variable, 3 and 10, and I would add those degrees together. So the degree of 3x cubed y to the 10th is 13. So just another example. Let's take a look at two more terms and see if we can find the degree of each term. So here I have 
the term a, b, c, d. Remember that we've said that when we have a variable with no exponent, it's understood that the exponent is 1. So each of these four variables have an exponent of 1 attached to them. So the degree of question A is 4. Question B, I have the term 37. Notice how there is no variable. So when there's no variable, when we just have a coefficient, we don't say that it has no degree. Instead, we say that the degree is 0. So now that we've defined what terms are and how we can work with terms, we can take terms and we can string them all together. And when we do that, we have something called a polynomial. A polynomial is an algebraic expression that consists of one or more terms, all connected by addition or subtraction. So let's look at one. I could take the term 3x cubed. I could subtract from that the term y to the power of 11. And this is a polynomial. I could come up with another polynomial. a squared plus b squared minus c squared plus d squared. That is also a polynomial. The single variable x is an expression with one term. It is a polynomial. A number all by itself, like the number 2, based on our definition of a polynomial, is still a polynomial. It's a single term polynomial. When we have a polynomial, when we have a polynomial with only one term, we call that polynomial a monomial. For example, 3z to the power of 4. That's a single term polynomial. It has a special name. It's called a monomial. A polynomial with two terms is a binomial. For example, 2m minus 3n squared. That's a two-term polynomial. We can call that a binomial. Three terms in your polynomial, something like x squared plus 4x minus 5, that's a trinomial. So polynomials are expressions that have terms strung together with addition or subtraction. We can have some special names for these expressions, monomials, binomials, trinomials, depending on how many expressions we have. And just like terms can have degrees, polynomials can also have degrees. So polynomials can have degrees, and we find that by looking at the term with the highest overall degree, and we say that that is the degree of the polynomial. For example, 4x squared plus x minus 7. Looking this over, I have a term that's degree 0, a term that's degree 1, and a term that's degree 2. So the highest degree term is a degree 2 term, so the degree of the polynomial is degree 2. So 
17 a squared b minus 4 ac cubed plus 5 abc is a polynomial. It's a trinomial because it has three terms. Why don't you see if you can find the degree of this polynomial now? When I look at this polynomial, if I look at the last term first, I can see that it has three variables, each with degree 1. So the last term has an overall degree of 3. My middle term, the variable A, has a degree of 1. The variable C has a degree of 3. So overall, that's degree 4. And then my first term, A has a degree of 2. B has a degree of 1. So overall, that term has a degree of 3. I'm looking for the highest degree term, which is degree 4. So the polynomial is degree 4. So then just to summarize, today we looked at terms, such as 4x squared. And we said that terms have two parts. The variable part, which is made up in the letter and the exponent, and the coefficient, which is the number part of the term. These terms can have degrees, and we find the degree of the term by adding up all the exponents on the variable. Polynomial is an algebraic expression consisting of one or more terms, all connected by addition or subtraction. And just like we can find the degree of a term, we can find the degree of the polynomial by finding the degree of the highest degree term. Ooh.